Hello everyone, welcome to Beach Investing, the legal series with Shell Rothman. I'm your host, Andre Angelkowski. Today we are talking about evicting tenants the right way. So, is there a right way, Shell? The right way is minimizing your expense and getting them out as quickly as possible. So whatever you can do to accomplish that goal, uh, that's what you definitely need to do. Uh, a couple of examples, so let's say you want the property for your own personal use. For whatever reason, the tenant is not a good tenant and you want to move back into the property. So you would have to give them 60 days notice. And just remember, the biggest mistake that landlords make is that when they're providing notice, if rent is paid on the first of the month, your notice, which is two months or 60 days in this case, has to be as of the first of the month. So for instance, if they pay as of September 1st and it is August 20th, that means you're giving notice from September 1st, October 1st, they'd be out by the end of October. But if you gave notice on September 2nd, guess what? You just lost a whole month. So now you'd be at the end of November. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is actually getting the tenant on board. You want to make sure that you're negotiating with them, finding out what their needs and wants are as well, because they might actually match up with yours, and you'll get a better uh, response and a, and a better result. So an example is, is that you might want to give a 60 days notice, but they're willing to move out at the end of next month. So you'd want them to sign uh, a form N11, which says everybody's in agreement for them to move out on a specific date. That way, if they don't move out that date, you don't have to give notice to the tenant that you're taking it to the landlord and tenant board for eviction. You can go straight to the landlord and tenant board, have them evicted without them even knowing because they already agreed to leave on a specific date. If you give them 60 days notice, the problem that you're at is that if they still don't leave, you can't just kick them out. You have to give them proper notice that you're taking them to the landlord and tenant board. They'll hire a lawyer at that point in time. Your expenses started rising. Okay, so let's just say I'm a buyer and I'm buying a triplex that is already tenanted. All three floors are tenanted. I want it vacant possession. Um, just so I don't have to put up with all that hassle of getting them out after I take ownership, I want them out when I close. Would it be in my benefit to have them all sign an N11 versus giving them 60 days from the first of the month? Ideally, the seller would want them to sign an N11. That would be the ideal scenario. Uh, as a buyer, you would just be able to have that comfort level that it's going to close on time. Uh, just keep in mind that if you're closing a deal and you want vacant possession, 90 days is probably a good idea for a closing date, 90 days out. And the reason why is because notice has to be provided. So if 60 days notice is provided and there's any issues for the seller getting them out, you want it to be the seller's issue. Mm -hmm. Realistically, you don't want to take over somebody else's problem, so you don't want to close this deal without vacant possession, because guess what? Now all the costs of evicting this tenant will now become your cost. Okay, so uh, another quick example a lot of viewers have asked, can't I just lock out the tenant if you know, I just feel like they're no longer there or they've caused a, a big mess in the house. Can I just change the locks? If it's a commercial property, you have a lot more leeway with respect to the agreement. So you look at the agreement and you can actually change the locks. Under Residential Tenancy Act, for just a regular tenant, um, you can't do that. You can't change the locks without the permission from the landlord and tenant board, which would actually issue an order. So the tenant is the one who has the power, not the landlord. And you definitely have to remember that. So. Uh, you can be in a lot of trouble, you can get in fines, it can cost you a lot of money if you have problems, which is why you always need to work with your tenant as opposed to having an adversarial approach uh, because you will get a lot further, you'll get better results and it'll cost you less money. Okay, and uh, one, uh, one other option, uh, I've heard other people do this, uh, you know, you, you want to get the tenant out, uh, they've been a big pain in the you know what, and you want to pay them out. Basically, here, here's one month's rent, just get out. At the end of the day, there's nothing in the landlord and, uh, and tenant board that says that you're required to be paying anybody. Uh, they require specific forms and notices to be provided. So, as I mentioned before, you want to be working with the tenant. So, you find a deal that works well for each of you, dates, times, and etc. And as long as that works for all the parties involved, then by all means, that's uh, not an issue. Okay, thank you very much, Shell. That was uh, part seven of the legal series. Thank you.